wanted to do some videos to show you guys how to better use RetroArch. I'm not an expert by any means, but I, I do know my way around it pretty well. I can definitely show you the basics. I've seen a lot of people having issues with pretty simple stuff or using different emulators because they think RetroArch is too difficult. So I figured I'd help you out. First thing I'm going to show you how to do is to set up your controllers. <clears throat> I did a video on this a long time ago, but this uh, it's changed quite a bit since then. So when you open up RetroArch, you're going to go down in the newest RetroArch, which is this. It looks completely different than the old one. But you're going to go down to settings, or on the old one, it'll be over. You're going to have to figure that out on your own. Go to input. First thing you're going to want to do is hotkeys. So what hotkeys do is they allow you to use your controller for a separate set of functions other than playing the video game. So like if you want to save it or exit or change shaders, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Open the menu from in a game, um, save slot, rewind even. <laughs> it's full on cheat right there. Let's see. Let's see if I'm missing anything. Nothing important. Volume. Next disc, previous disc. So if you're playing like um, a PlayStation game, you can use your hotkey for next disc and it'll switch or allow you to switch to the next disc. Okay, so let's start at the top here. Okay, hotkey enable. Uh, let's see. I don't even know for sure if this is going to like my... It's not. I'm trying to use my Xbox controller and it's got... Here. Let's see if I can... Got to change this to Xbox. Okay. Let's try it again. So, let's see. if this works, I'll go back and show you what I did there. Okay, it does work. So, port one is player one, port two is player two, and so on, right? So, I just went to port one, which is my player one. I changed the device to the, my Xbox controller because I've got three, I've got joysticks hooked up, and I also have an Xbox controller. I want the Xbox controller to be my default player one, okay? So I went and did that first, and now I can go into hotkeys here. See, I set enable hotkey for is select. So that way if I'm holding down select, and I hit one of these other buttons, it will take that action, okay? We don't need fast forward, slow motion. You can do all that stuff if you really want to. Um, load state, st state and save state. I'm going to, let's see. I'll make load state, left trigger, and we'll make save state, right trigger. <coughs> okay, so if I hold down select and I hit my left trigger, it'll load my previous save state. If I hold down select and hit my right trigger, it will save the game right where it's at, no matter what. And then let's see, quit RetroArch. I'm going to use start for that. So if I hold down select and start at the same time, it will exit RetroArch. Save state slot. I'm going to set those to left bumper and right bumper. So basically each game, I think you have up to like six slots where you can save your state. So you could take you know, like you could have one save game in slot one and your kid could have a save game in slot two. Now on top of that, RetroArch will save your games normally within the game. Like in Mario, when you beat a level and you go to save and continue, it will actually save that game. Um, but the save states you can use anytime, right in the middle of a, of a level. Doesn't even matter. Okay. Pause, you could set a pause button for the actual emulator 
like if the game doesn't have pause like an arcade game you could set a pause button pause toggle and you could even pause an arcade game any game you want really reset you could set a key for that if you wanted to i don't really see a reason for it next shader and previous shader so these are important shaders if you don't know what they are they change the look of um the actual graphics it puts in like scan lines to make it like on old 8-bit games where they look like crap it'll smooth out the lines and make everything look a lot nicer like you're playing on an old school crt television so i'm going to set next shader and previous shader we're going to make those x and y okay previous cheat index i've never even messed with the cheats who but you can mess with those if you want to toggle cheats on and off right there let's see overlays if you're using retroarch overlays those are like bezels you can use this to toggle through the bezels uh, i'm not using that so i'm not going to mess with any of that next disc previous disc i told you you can use those um, but our playstation games the discs are combined either on pvp or chd format so we don't need those okay desktop menu no we don't need that okay menu toggle so what this will do is open the men the retroarch menu within a game okay i'm going to set that to a I think that's all we're going to need. So if I hold down select, now I can save state, I can change the state slot, I can load a saved state, I can quit RetroArch, I can change shaders all within the game just by holding select and hitting the other buttons that we set these up for. Okay, so now I'm going to go back and we're going to actually do our controls for player one. Okay this I'm just gonna go make sure it's on the controller you want it to be set for and I'm gonna go set all controls and it'll go through them okay B button down so that's gonna be a on an Xbox controller Y is left that's actually X on an Xbox controller you get where I'm going with that we're gonna set these up I'm not gonna go through it all you just hit the button that it tells you to hit L3 is your joystick clicks left analog right left down up right analog right left down up okay so the controls for my player one are set now and you can go through and do the same thing for player two or all the way up to player five if that's what you want to do and then you need to go out before you exit retroarch you always want to go into configuration okay save current configuration and that's going to save it as a default if you click save new configuration while you have a core loaded it'll save it just for that core that's going to be it for this video